Hey folks, Cool18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. It is the experimental build for version 1.2, and today we are going to try to do a lunar flyby. So this is the orbiter that we used, our very first orbit with Valentina as the design. Now we're going to go to the moon, which means we don't need an antenna because it won't be able to reach. We definitely don't need the drogue chute. That was only in there to facilitate some extra testing. We are going to want to bring as much science as we can. Um, and ideally, we would like to do a upper and lower um, moon set of science, which would mean, say, two goo containers. I'm not going to bring a material thing because it's too heavy, but two goo can canisters should be okay. Um, however, we can also grab science from the upper atmosphere or the the high orbit of um, of Kerbin. So, because we've done low orbit of Kerbin, we can do high orbit of Kerbin, and then yes, high and low of the moon would be nice. I we may I don't know. We could probably do it now. Since we can't EVA in space right now. Although, I could upgrade the Science Center to let us EVA, which would give us even more science and might be worthwhile. Hang on a sec. Uh, cancel. This is going to be uh, Moon 1. Save that. Leave this. Let's take a look here. It is the Astronaut Complex. For 7500 bucks, we can gain the ability to do EVAs. This will also give us the ability to reset experiments. Not, not the goo canisters or the material bays, unless we have a scientist, but it means we can go out and do the um, the temperature gauges. Alternatively, we could have the science canister to auto-collect that. But I think it's worth doing... Oh, wait, yeah. I think it's worth doing that because we'll get a fair amount of science from the EVAs themselves, and then we can keep cost and weight of our ship down by not having to either um, A, include multiple thermometers, or B, include one of the experiment storage unit. It is pretty light, but that will make it easier. So I'm going to put this right outside the door like that so to make it easier for us to reset. And I'm going to go and put a pair of goo canisters. Do I want another one? I guess we will. So right over here. So that way we can do upper curb in atmosphere and then those. We don't have the barometer. I mean, you can't take air pressure in space anyway. So in the end, We'll get, we'll actually get four EVAs in space, because lower and upper Kerbin, lower and upper Moon. We'll get the three goos, we'll get three temperatures. If we're really bold, we could maybe even do an EVA um, in the atmosphere of Kerbin, but I don't think that's going to happen. All right, so that's that, and we're going to include some solar panels so that we don't run out of power. Mm, where do I want to put this? put on mirror symmetry like this and that's probably gonna be fine I mean I could put some stuff down here too actually maybe that'll be better we won't return it but um, let's go regular radial symmetry and just put it here we don't get to bring these home but that's okay okay now if we take a look at our weight this is pretty much where we want it to be so we don't really want to add any fuel over here. We don't have the fuel um, line, so we don't get to do really good asparagus staging, unfortunately. But what we can still do is we can get a little bit of extra oomph by taking off with some SRBs. This is actually probably way too much because the SRBs have, yeah, that's really so right now we've got 450 going down. Yeah, this is going to be too fast. I could downrate it, but then that starts to be a long time to run without any real ability to steer, which I don't like. Now it's worth noting SRBs don't add a ton of delta V. What they are is cheap and they add a lot of thrust. But if we do something like that and then put nose cones on the top, even then, so right now we're looking at, again, 300 pulling us down. They're each 250, so that's probably a little fast taken off. I think we'd probably bring it down like that. Launch the SRBs, and then start the secondary engine, and then do that. Is this enough to get us to the moon back? I don't know! Let's find out. What could possibly go wrong? So, uh, Valentino is our first person to orbit 
the planet. I think I'll bring uh, Jebediah next. Although, there is the problem that Jebediah doesn't have any experience. Uh, he doesn't have level 1 yet, so therefore he can't hold retrograde or prograde for us automatically, which is a nice feature. <sighs> Isn't the end of the world, though? Especially for this run. I think we'll go with Jebediah. This will get him the, the, the other level. Actually, as soon as he goes into orbit, he gets the level 1, which is nice. I realize that the boosters are a little off kilter, but that's okay. Uh, what I do need to do here, though, is... Do we not have struts? Really? I guess it would show up down here. I guess we don't have struts. Um, that might be a little... They're definitely going to bow in a little bit when we launch, but probably it's okay. All right. Let's see if we can do a lunar flyby here. I'm not 100% confident, but we'll try. Turn on SAS. Full throttle, although the throttle doesn't apply for the SRBs. Let's go. Yeah, definitely the bow in a little bit, but that's okay. Um, the speed at launch isn't too bad. So ideally, we'd like to do our gravity turn at um, about 100 meters per second or about one kilometer above. It's a good, it's a good solid place to start. But the SRBs do not gimbal; they don't steer. So all we have right now is our uh, reaction wheels from up here, which is pretty minimal. Actually, it is enough to start the move. Oh, actually, I'm quite surprised. It's not much. It's not much at all. And mostly we're going to fight just to try not to go in the wrong direction. But that ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. Okay. Yeah, we're, going, we're ascending pretty steeply. But at least it started. And go. And... We're going to try to bring it down a little bit more reasonably. I'm going to cut some of the speed here because we're going... Actually, we're not going that fast. Full speed is fine. But we're definitely looking to push down. It is very risky. Once you're outside the prograde circle, you stand a chance because you're not facing into the sort of the air current. You stand a chance of going end over end over end. So it's very risky to go too far off, and at some point it's going to start going away without you. But, no, we're okay. We're a little steeper than I would ideally like, but it's not too bad. We can drag this down pretty quickly. So we got some extra oomph from those SRBs. Is it enough? I don't know. Without Delta V calculations, we're mostly just blind. We're sort of spitballing it here, and hopefully we've got enough juice to go to the moon. Um, now, since I didn't actually have to upgrade my VAB, we are going to be able to invest in the tracking station so that we can get... Um, so that we can get um, uh, patch conics to get some previews. I might be going a little too low here. Because we're probably getting heat effects. Actually, no, we're fine. So by going very horizontally like this, we're, we're ending up with a very flat curve, which is really efficient. But there, there's that, that, that middle ground of efficiency. You want to leave the thick atmosphere as quickly as possible, but then you want to hit orbit with this as flat as possible. We're pretty high up now, though. I think I'm going to burn directly towards the atmosphere, or the, the, the horizon. Keep this flattening out. We're going to push the apoapsis up and up and up and up. Yep, nope. I, I think we're pretty efficient here. I'm mostly happy. Um, didn't Wasn't there something I needed to run? No, no, not in the atmosphere, I don't think. Push this out, push this out. Get it above 70 on this stage. That would be just perfect. So in a little bit of room to breathe. I like that. A lot of times I aim for 100k because it's a nice round number, but this is actually, this is really good. So we can go ahead and stage. Nice little red hot engine over there. Beautiful. So we're going to stage there. I'm not going to light, actually, there we go. I've lit the next engine. Just test it. Yep, there it goes. So I'm ready to go as soon as we get near the apoapsis. Can I from here, no, I can't. Once we enter space, I could temporarily switch over to tracking station. It would just make it easier to circularize, but it would be very, very tricksy to pull off properly. Goodbye, engine stage. We're not recovering it, so we're not going to uh, get our money back, unfortunately, but that's all right. Um, I think it's okay if I just start physics warping here to get the space a wee bit faster. Oh, we've done all this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in space, yes, we did that as well. Okay, now we're officially in space. I'm going to hit this at some point. I can't just lock prograde, which is too bad, but I'll do something like that. 
Um, fast forward just a little. Okay. I'm going to start the burn. Okay. See how we start the burn? It's pushing the apoapsis away. That means that's a clear sign that we're starting a little too early. And earlier is better than too late. But we really need very little burn for us to circulate here because we're already really flat. There you go. It's, it's still pushing it away, but it's not too bad. And what it means by pushing it away, we're raising the apoapsis a little faster. So we're not. We're spending a fair bit of our thrust raising the apoapsis instead of circularizing. We're still circularizing really well because we're nearly there. This is inevitable. Uh, at this point, I think I'm, I can just go. There we are. Something like that. 71, 85. So not totally circular because we didn't start our burn at the apoapsis, but we are properly and safely in orbit at this point, which means we can do a few things like, for example, how about we EVA? So our very first EVA, Jebediah. Very exciting. We can get an EVA report. You've recorded the, our observations about the situation. There really needs to be more flavor text added there. So we're going to keep that experiment. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to let go. Because that's exciting as hell. Alright. And then we're going to grab and board. Okay, good stuff. So now what do we do? Now we need to get to the moon, which is over there. And ideally, or very simply, to get to the moon, all you do is you start a burn from around here, basically as soon as you see the moon rise in the distance. To make my life slightly simpler, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the space center. Just fine. Our ship's still running, though. we got to get back quickly. I'm going to space center. I'm going to upgrade the tracking station, which gives us patch conics. By doing that, it will give us a prediction. We still don't have maneuver nodes. But that's okay. We need a mission control upgrade for maneuver nodes. So it doesn't give us that, but what it means is when I start pushing out, I will correctly see when we will intercept the moon, rather than sort of have to eyeball, eyeball that part. We're going to eyeball the um, the thrust, like the starting point, but that's it. So, oh, turn on the SAS, point roughly retro or prograde, although that will change. And again, it's going to be somewhere around here. Which makes sense, right? Because the moon's up there, so we've got to make sure the Kerbin is not between us. So I'm going to fast forward just a little until we get a little closer to here. Uh, I'd call that pretty good. And then turn the view a little bit, and then we're just going to, only at times five, we're going to wait until we can see the moon. I'm trying to peek around the planet a little bit more. We should start, there's the moon. Okay, so kill that face ourselves prograde and burn there we go so what this is doing so the moon's there we're there we're stretching this out here and it will just so happen that the time it takes us to go from here to over here is the time it takes for the moon to go from there to there brilliant beautiful very simple uh we are presumably um on the correct inclination yeah there we go basically going equatorial which is a nice launch by setting the moon as a target you get these numbers that tell you how many degrees off you are if you're like like if your orbit's going to be above or below and you can make adjustments by burning normal or anti-normal at these nodes over here but we're quite happy we can clear the target by double clicking yeah used to be hmm, i don't know and we here we're just going to burn i'm going to slow it down here burn until see these encounters get close and there we go when this per you don't have to set a target to get that, but when this purple line happens, it means you're encountering the body. So now what I want to do is I want to focus on the moon. This is where we're actually going to encounter. You only get this because of the patch conics. And I'm going to just aim myself prograde again. Just burn a little bit. A little burn now has a big impact. And ideally, I don't know when the uh, lower moon orbit starts, but there we go. Definitely that will count. Now, we may have to do a little bit of an adjustment when we get a little closer because of the way that the uh, the math works out. But overall, we are good. So what I want to do now is I want to accelerate. I'm going to get uh, recenter over here. And just getting higher up here. There we go. We're, we've got to be, yeah, we're in, we're in upper Kerbin orbit now. Getting some more milestones. Oxidizer, liquid fuel, hopefully we're all good. I want to get a crew report. Crew reporting in from space. So we're space high above Kerbin. So these are all new areas. We're going to run one of our goo canisters over here as well. 
The goo feels right at home here, excellent. Then we're gonna EVA, get an EVA report, high above Kerbin, 12 science there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the science out of the thermometer. Um, oh, did I forget to do the thermometer? I did forget to do the thermometer. There we go, log that. Only scientists can run experiments outside, but anyone can grab the science out of it. There we go. We could take the science out of the goo canister, but it doesn't matter since we can't reuse it anyway. It would matter if the goo canisters were on the bottom part, but in this case, we're gonna bring the goo canisters home. Oh, and I need to do one more thing. I need to EVA, take all the data out, so that includes the crew report, and then when we board, the crew report gets stored somewhere else um, so that we can run another crew report. But we're not, we have nothing else to do until we get to the moon. So can I not do the, the click to warp? I don't need the, um, I don't need the alarm clock for that, do I? Oh, unset target, that's new. I'm sure you could warp to a destination. Maybe, maybe you need the, um, the maneuver planner for that. Okay, fair enough. I'll go to a thousand times warp. It uh, should auto de Man, look at all the signal connections we've got over there. And we still have it. Okay, our power's going down. Okay, so the power can't possibly be an actual range. I can't get the stats here. When we get back and we look at the, um, the VAB, we're going to check to see what the transmission power of the command pod is. Well, this is our reception, though. This is not our ability to send. That's true. Definitely fading. Two bars. Oh, we're, we're having a really hard time playing Pokemon Go now. Uh, what I forgot to do is recheck that this has come in happily. Yeah, it has changed though. Notice it was 41 before, now it's 38. Just slight rounding errors. Plus, if we rotate around, shift the center of gravity a little bit, um, some of the numbers get updated a little bit uh, more differently. But no, all right, we're very happy with that. Start to cross through here. You don't want to cross through these too fast. In fact, I think it'll auto dewarp us down to 50 when we do the crossing. Uh, but for this, it doesn't matter too, too much. Look at that, red lines. Yeah, we're gonna have to get our satellite network up and running. This is very cool. Very cool. In fact, probably what we'll do is we'll get a port. Well, soon we'll get missions to actually launch satellites in general. I mean, there, they were all, there were already missions like that in Kerbal. And I assume there's gonna be just more with more detail now. Um, and we'll get a bit of a network going on. Nice, one in polar orbit will be nice and minimize how many times we um, we are eclipsed, especially if it's in very high polar orbit, but we'll see what else we do. Okay, so we are now in high moon orbit, which means we can do a new round of science. So we're gonna observe this goo. Goo feels right at home, excellent, it's 20 science. We're gonna do the thermometer here, log that. Measuring the temperature of space is pretty hard. Yes, it is, we're gonna get a crew report. Look down at cold grade surface, it looks really beat up with craters. And then we're gonna EVA, get our EVA report. Excellent, 16 science. It's good for a lot of experience points too. We're gonna take the temperature from the thermometer. Then we're gonna take all the data from this, which is mostly there to reset the um, crew report. And then we'll get back in. And then we're gonna wait until we hit our low point over here. Now, the other thing is when we leave, that's interesting. I wonder if there's any chance we'd get close to Minmus. All right, let's take a quick pause here. We're gonna go back to the Space Center. Money is, is good. I'm very comfortable and happy with the money. So we are gonna go ahead and upgrade Mission Control. So that way we can actually run maneuvers. Because there's a possibility here. So you can see, after we, we fly by the moon, it's actually gonna slingshot us into a higher orbit. We're gonna be quite high up over here. Um, which A, could mean some difficulty for a return home, but really, if we do a retrograde burn from here, we don't have life support or anything like that, so a long, slow journey doesn't really matter. But if we do a retrograde burn from here, it should easily drop or parry back into a Kerbin orbit, which is great. But I'm just wondering if, with a little bit of jiggling, we might do a min -miss encounter. Probably not. I suspect that by the time we get here, min -miss will still be over here. But a tiny little burn at our periapsis at the moon will have a massive massive impact on our orbit. So, out of curiosity, we had a maneuver over here, which we can do now. And, uh, set as target, there we go. Uh, and then, click on this again, there we go. 
Actually, there's a very close encounter there. Boom, we can encounter Minmus. I don't know what that will do to our resulting orbit. What's the um, delta V of this maneuver? 109. That I don't actually know how much delta V I have left in the tank. And I gotta come home. But I don't know. Rescue missions are always fun, right? I suspect we can probably get this encounter with a little bit less that way. Well, maybe not, actually. Well, that's an encounter there, and it's slightly less. And again, I don't know what that's going to do to orbit afterwards. This would be a very high Minmus orbit. Can I focus on you and see where we'd be? Right over there. It'd be nice to do high and low, and it's not going to take much more to do that now, assuming I can actually click on this. There we go. Oh, yeah, all right. A little of that, and then a little of this. Oh, we'd be coming on from the wrong side, which is not what we want. Well, actually, in this case, no, it'd be more of a slingshot. So just trying to line this up so that we're a bit more equatorial. Because it'll stop us from flinging in a sort of a more uncomfortable location. Not that way. Okay. I'll, I'll probably have to do an adjustment after. Because this is like really hard to tune this. Although I guess you can mouse wheel on these, can't you? Yes, I forgot about that. You can make minute changes by mouse wheeling. Now, in practice, I'm almost certainly not going to be able to execute this burn with this degree of accuracy. But, in theory, this is the burn we're going to want. Okay. Still, we've got more work to do around the moon for now. What I suppose I could do is I could preemptively face myself towards the maneuver node, which is this blue thing. So this is the direction I'm going to burn in eventually, although not for another hour and 27 minutes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward a bunch. We're getting closer to burn time, but also we're getting lower and lower in the lunar orbit. Which will be at about the same time, because I think we set up the maneuver pretty close to the parry. Yeah, pretty much bang on, which is nice. That's exactly where we'll have the biggest impact. Um, crew report. Space near the moon. Excellent. Keep that experiment. Run the other goo canister. It means we're not going to get it a min -miss, but we're probably going to land on min -miss first. So we're probably going to get a chance to run more of those experiments there. Uh, log the temperature. We're going to EVA. Get an EVA report. We're going to, I know I'm going fast here. Uh, we're going to take the temperature data. Then we're going to take everything out of that. And then we're going to board. Okay, we've got one minute, 41 seconds. We don't know what the burn time is yet. It will give us a, a number on that once we actually start the burn and it knows some information about the engine. But right now, um, because we've popped in and out of this, the computer system does not know how, what our burn rate is and how long it'll actually take us to execute this. Still, uh, 100 meter per second delta V with a relatively light ship. Now this is a weak engine, it's a weak but efficient engine. I'm guessing it's gonna be less than 30 seconds, but we'll see. So I'm gonna start with, maybe at 30 I'll do the initial burn just to reset the numbers. Yeah, okay. Now I don't wanna burn full strength here. immediately proceeds to burn full strength. There we go. Let's try this. There we go. Try to keep that aimed. Yeah, it's very hard to get the precision we're looking for here. Very, very, very hard. And in practice, um, while a tiny bit of delta V difference makes a huge difference here, because we didn't do it exactly the, the time that we initially set up, we're almost certainly not hitting exactly where we're going to hit. We still get the target, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we're out of the uh, the moon's area of influence here, get about partway through, then I'll do a corrective burn. Still have lots of fuel, so... Um, actually, I should have checked the numbers, but I'm guessing we've got another four or 500 delta V based on how that went, which is really nice. And that should be more than enough to get us back home. So there's our moon flyby. Whew! It's tense, isn't it? get this going. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the sphere of influence of the moon here. 
make the crossing, which should drop our warp automatically down to 50. Let's give it a bit more. Oh, that's actually a very nice return path as is. Assuming we're not planning on smacking into the min which we'll have to verify. But this is not very high up um, a curb. I mean, it's 1.8 million meters, but that's going to be a very easy correction for us. Very easy. We've got lots of fuel for this. Very successful mission. Okay, I'm going to call that good enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on min again and see what we're ending up with. 117,000 meters which is a little bit high. I don't think we can get our low min miss info. So we're going to add a maneuver here. And we're going to, there we go. 37, 37 is probably fine. 15 is a little short. Oh, but look, look at, like, it's a microscopic burn. I probably can't actually do this um, with any degree of accuracy. So while it would be really nice and efficient to do it here, what we're going to do instead is we're going to fast forward to here. The closer we are, the less efficient our burn will be. But it means it'll give me enough of my... Oh, we have no signal at all. Um, no data. Oh, God. I can't know if anyone's tweeting. Um, I get so much anxiety when you're seeing this because of real life. So it's less efficient, but it means I've got more of a margin of error to actually create the maneuver that I want. So let's try that. In fact, I'm betting at this point that radial anti-radial is probably going to be the way we want. Even then, look at this. 0.4 meters per second to try to drop it. I mean, that's probably low min miss. That definitely will be 0.6 meters per second. Well, all right, let's do it. So we're gonna pop out of here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the engine, take the thrust limiter, bring it way down. So now 100% on here is actually only 2.5%. So we are microscopically low, like tiny little burns. And I'm only gonna use one tap of shift to very slowly burn towards there, but even getting like the, the aim bang on is gonna be a little tricky. There we go, really slow. I mean, oh, I'm not even at my node yet, hold on. So I might still, whoa, I told you to stop. Wow, that took too long, oh well. It's probably still gonna be pretty damn close. But yeah, I forgot that my node was so far off. Okay, let's see what this is looking like. Yeah, there we go. Good enough. All right, good. So before I forget, I'm going to go and bring that back up. And I think I can just fast forward to the min miss encounter here. So I can only get crew reports, temperature reports, and EVAs. But that's all right. Now, I'll definitely want to slow this down a bit before we do the encounter, because otherwise I might be... Well, no, I'm still going to be pretty much bang on. But yeah, let's bring it down to times a thousand here. We're going to get here in two hours. How long has this mission been going on? Fifteen days so far! Yeah, I hope... Um, I hope Valentina brought plenty... Or, this is Jebediah. I hope Jebediah brought plenty of snacks. This is also going to fling us... Actually, into perfectly fine... That's right, perfectly fine orbit. Anyway, we are now in high... Well, not orbit. It'll say orbit. We're not actually in orbit. Um, but we're in a high orbit above Minmus. Or space high above Minmus is what it says. More science, I think, than the moon because it's further away, which is nice. So we're going to look at the surface. Minmus reminds me of a favorite childhood dessert. You're tempted to taste the surface. Mm. So we've got no goo that we can run. That's all right. We didn't know this would work out so well. Log temperature over here. Yep, still doesn't work. Turns out space doesn't work out so well. That was a crew report, so now we EVA. We do an EVA report. We grab the temperature, take data. We take the data out of there, we reboard. Okay, now we're gonna wait until we're in low min miss orbit. Uh, I could plan a maneuver here. Again, a maneuver done at the periapsis of a body like this has a dramatic impact on what comes next. We could get a second encounter with the moon if we wanted. That's kind of funny. You can see here we're going to drop our periapsis a fair bit. Can't actually see the number. 28. 148. Oop. I think it actually went.
I think that's as much precision as I'm going to get over here. It's still a pretty small burn. But it's worth noting that even though I'm looking to sort of slow down, right, I want to slow down to drop our orbit, I'm actually burning prograde here. And the reason is because the direction we're moving in is opposite of the orbital direction of Minmus. So by burning prograde here, it's effectively the same as a retrograde against Kerbin. So that's cool. Okay. Yeah, very minute little maneuver. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this uh, thrust limiter down. Not as much as last time. Nice to get exactly at 20. Oh, there it is. Because um, it'll give me a little bit more precision. But there's Minmus. We're still mostly just going to wait now for... You know what I should do? In case I misclick space and like accidentally stage. Just do a little quick save here. Whoop, 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 whoop. You know what? That's the reason you quick save every time before you time warp, because it took too long to de-time warp. So we'll just um, reload that quick save. Time warping. Also, it tends to be the place where things crash. I guess, oh, I forget that I've got, um, I can do this now. Warp to here. That's much safer. But even then, uh, sometimes you you accidentally click on the wrong line there, so that warp to here isn't even 100% 100 guaranteed to be safe. There we go. And then warp to here. Excellent. Okay. That should be low minmus orbit. Or low minmus space. Um, crew report. Nope, we're still high above Minmus. Okay. We're two minutes away from this maneuver. What I should do is point myself that way right now. It's a very short burn, at least. Okay, this has got to be near Minmus. Still high above Minmus. Wow! When does the near space start for this? Hopefully we'll actually... Oh, there it is. Probably right there when the camera changes angles. Crew report. Near. Yes, excellent. Keep experiment. That's one. Two is the thermometer. And three is EVA. Get the EVA report. Keep that. Uh, then we take this. And we probably won't do any more crew reports, but we may as well take and then board anyway. Okay. SCS turn back on. Face ourselves the right way. Just barely. There we go. Get a little bit closer. And go for burn. Just about right. Technically still a little early, even with the D rating here. Whoops. And then that's drifting a little. Alright. Probably, well, good enough. I mean, we're just doing this as a way to save some fuel. We still have a ridiculous amount of fuel. And... We're going to pass uh, 119 meters. So we still have to drop it a little bit. But we're basically there. So for simplicity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and time warp until we leave the sphere of influence of Minus. Like that. It'll just be easier to make sure I'm facing exactly the way I want. So there we go. So now we are in orbit around Kerbin. I'm going to just face myself retrograde. Like so. And all I want to do is drop the parry down about 30 should be fine there we go pretty good now we have lots of fuel left in fact we could use this to burn off a little bit more speed before re-entry which i've done plenty of times but i think i'm not going to worry about it instead i'm going to do a big time warp here so again we quick save then we are going to warp to here it's going to take us eight days to get from here to there and then probably just a few more hours to land after that. Because, of course, we're getting pulled towards Kerbin right now. So we're getting accelerated, 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 accelerated as we get pulled in by Kerbin. And we'll reach max speed, well, right around there. You reach your maximum speed at the lowest point of your orbit. Hey, we've got a connection again. Get Netflix again. Excellent. Warp a little closer. Watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, cats. You're still as funny as you always have been. Um, and yeah, so we could do some, some burns basically somewhere between retrograde and, um, radial as a good way to not change your periapsis, but while burning off a bunch of your orbital speed, uh, we can try a little example here. Cause if I were to just burn retro, what would happen is it would drop my, um, my peri, which I don't really want. But if I burn radial, what I'm doing is sort of twisting the orbit. So this side will go up, and this side will come down, which will actually raise my periapsis. But if you do it in between, 
you can tweak it in such a way that you can sort of balance it there. I forgot my engine's derated right now, so that's going to take a little longer. So it's a way to use your excess fuel to just kill some orbital velocity without messing with your targeted periapsis too, too much. So if you need to raise it, you go a little bit more radial. If you need to drop it, you go a little bit more retrograde. And as this gets smaller, it's going to be harder and harder and harder to manage. Raise a little. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite high on my periapsis here. I could afford to go a lot lower. Yeah, it becomes very, very hard to balance because a tiny change has a big impact all of a sudden. We're basically out of fuel. You know, we may as well dump the rest of it. Let's go a little higher up. Oh. Not too high. There we go. Excellent. Out of fuel. 30,000 periapsis. Again, a little higher than we need to, but what the hell? A little extra safety. Um, electric charge fine because we've got our solar panels. Although, we are about to ditch the solar panels. And I think I'm okay with that. I like to ditch for whatever reason anti-radially there we go it's still gonna re-enter but uh, and then we're gonna preemptively set ourselves well technically surface retrograde and turn off the SAS because we shouldn't need it we're still a little while away from the re-entry so actually before I do the big time warp let's quick save there we go I mean I can't change my, my, my position anymore but it just avoids one possible source of fuck upiness so we're just going to bring down the time warp speed to 10. There we go. I'm just going to adjust to there again. But I should not have to do any steering. While I say that, I'm a little bit more worried with the uh, different weight distribution and possible friction with the air from these, um, these things. Um, we're not going to reset them. It'd be nice to close them. It would just look less dumb, but it doesn't matter. There's the moon. We flew by you and Minmus as well. Let's start physics warping here just to accelerate things a wee bit. And we're just going to monitor this and confirm. Yeah, it looks like it is indeed working properly and no heat effects happening on the goo canisters, which is nice. They're, they're shielded just enough to not be a problem. If we look at our orbit here, all right, we were coming at 30, but effectively because the air is slowing us down, it's the same as burning retrograde right here. So because we're not right on a periapsis, it's dropping our periapsis, but more importantly, it's dropping our apoapsis. And at some point, this is actually gonna hit the ground, which means clearly we're gonna return. Actually, the moment the apoapsis drops below 70, it means we're not gonna simply skip out into space again. But there we go, there we go, there we go. And at some point, yeah, clearly, clearly we are on our way home now. We only have a single parachute, but we're coming in pretty sideways. We should easily bleed off enough speed. We've initiated first flyby of the sun. Did we? Oh, no! That's what I get for physics warping here. Hang on. There's no reason that should have done that. So I'm actually going to go and reload the quick save. There's no... I'm, I'm convinced that should not have done that. That's entirely because I was physics warping. From my own impatience, we can easily manage that. So let's get this facing correctly again. And if need be, okay, I'll physics warp for a little while. Whoa! Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, stop trying to do things too quickly. We're just going to manage this. And if need be, we can do the the rotation trick to help us to bleed off some of the heat off these. They might still pop, actually. It's entirely possible that we will lose these goo canisters. But yeah, that... I'm pretty confident, and we're building up some speed, or some heat, I'm pretty confident is mostly just a result of me going too fast. But if they do pop, then that's really unfortunate, in which case the fix would have been, well, we could have brought in the data. Um, and yeah, and I mean, these popping aren't going to damage the rest of my ship, but um, we could have brought in the data, and in, if we're going to do that, we could have left it on the other part and just dumped it into space. There's actually no reason that I shouldn't have grabbed this data before re-entering. I should have just grabbed it regardless. I mean, we can't reset it, but I can make sure it's not on the outside and overheating. 
I'm actually wondering about doing that. Well, I'm not going to go and reload things from the quick save to fix that. And use the quick save to, like, compensate for the fact that sometimes things don't work exactly the way you would expect based on physics warping. But if we actually manage this descent and it's not going at times four speed, I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay. I don't know. They're definitely getting atmospheric effects. They're not perfectly shielded here. We'll see how this goes. What the? Um, camera. Wow. That was just the camera going mental. All right. Good. Excellent. And we've got SAS on, so it won't auto-lock to the retrograde, so I do have to tweak it a little bit here. But it gives me the ability to keep an eye on this and manage it on its way down. I really should not do the physics warp. And I don't normally. Not when I'm not recording, but I'm like, oh, i got to speed this up for the audience, right? Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> uh, let's aim a little bit. Actually, if you hit um, the caps lock key, then you can fine-tune a lot more. And it's a lot easier to stay faced exactly the way you want. Which, again, this part should be perfectly fine and automatic. I was just being ready to do some rotation. We've got no heat meters showing up, though. And I would have... I mean, it's still got an opportunity. Is the ablation rate... No, the ablation rate's going down. So, yeah. Like, literally no heat problems. So, the ablation rate is going down, which means we're, get, we're generating less heat. And we haven't had any problems here whatsoever. So... Yeah, that was just the times four multiplier. Although, in hindsight, I really, really, really should have collected the science out of this the last time I EVA'd. Um, because there's no reason to leave it in the canisters at all. Especially if there's any risk that it might burn up on re-entry. Or if we land wrong and we smash one of the canisters or something. I should have collected all the data. And I also need to make sure I'm facing the right way here. Excellent. So one of the disadvantages of keeping the SAS on and steering its way down is it does use some power, but it doesn't use very much at all. And again, with a better pilot, what I would do is actually lock to retrograde surface, which is wonderful, except the default um, SAS mode does for, for holding like retrograde here does eat a lot of power um, just because of the way it's tuned. The MechJeb one uses much less power because it's actually a lot more delicate and intelligent about its adjustments. Okay, yeah, n like not a single heat meter. So that was just that was a result of me rushing the physics system. So oops. We got no contracts. Actually, I, ooh, I screwed up there. What I should have done is I should have checked to see after we did the moon flyby if we had a contract for Minmus flyby. And I bet that we do. I'm gonna let us drop a little bit more here before I go and deploy the chute just to try to minimize some of this time. Should I physics warp? Oh, haven't I learned my lesson already? Quick save, physics warp. About two kilometers, I would like to deploy our parachute for the initial slowdown. And then at one kilometer, it'll fully deploy. Boom. G forces go up. That's very manageable, though. And come in for a slow landing. So, again, physics warp because I'm incredibly impatient. Kids, don't do this at home. <laughs> Sp rocket science, space flight, you know, using giant explosives, that's all fine. Don't use a physics warp. You're just asking for trouble. And there we go. Easy peasy. Now, I don't think this will work, but before I recover the vessel, and the other thing is, um, quick save before you go back and forth between the science center and switch vessels. That was more of a problem before the 64-bit build, because you could sometimes hit memory cap limits. It's less of a problem now. Just in case there's a mission that's relevant. Okay, there wouldn't have been. Ooh, position satellite in a specific orbit of the moon. Although that satellite will not have a signal back home. There we go. These satellite missions, we're going to get started on that. But plant flag on Minmus. Oh, we can take more missions now. So that's good. So uh, satellite in orbit of Kerbin. Satellite in orbit of the moon. Plant a flag on um, on Minmus. Uh, test the turbofan. You know, uh, only if you activate it at a certain time. That's kind of inconvenient. Oh, sp science data from space around Kerbin. Definitely. We've got some rescue missions, which is a great way to get some extra um, astronauts. They're also really, really, really fun. We may have to do some of those. Yeah, see, I don't particularly care about that. Lots of rescue missions. This testing would be a little bit annoying. It's not undoable. I'd have to fly up to here, be at a decent speed, actually, and then stage a new turbofan engine. Yeah, I think we're going we're gonna to ignore that one. Science data from the surface of the moon, yes. Um, 
we can definitely start some of this tourism and it's worth a lot of money. We're definitely, we've got, um, okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our ship. I could just recover it now, but I'll, I'll go and do it from this point of view. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but there's no extra missions that are going to complete it here. So that's okay. We'll just recover this vessel, get a crap ton of science. Chuka, 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 chuka. Boom. 400 science in the bank. Nice. Most important one at this point is getting the external fuel ducts so that we can do some asparagus staging. Also over here so we can get some struts. It's also got the um, the cabin so that we can bring tourists to space a little bit more easily, which is really nice. I think we probably want to unlock the barometer for some extra science. Ladders are pretty good too. Although surprisingly not important in space very much. These little adapters are actually kind of handy. Um, we don't need the bigger engines, which is what this is. These are the 2.5 meter engines as opposed to 1.25. Protective shell, radial decoupler. Yeah, we can pretty much live without a lot of this. We could do some more fun um, aircraft design with this stuff, but it's not critical. Uh, what about landing struts? That actually seems like a pretty good idea. So we're going to grab that. What do we unlock over here? Lander can, thrusters, better winglets. We have enough for this. Okay, we're going to give the uh, barometer so we don't have anything else. I'm going to grab the flight control over here because these winglets and everything are handy. Plus, it un it'll un contribute to unlocking more stuff. Okay, lots of great unlocks over there. I think the next mission may, in fact, be... Oh, well, it'll probably be the satellites, actually. It's kind of annoying that it's like science from the surface of the moon, plant flag on Minmus. If we do these satellites and it sort of refreshes things, we might get um, both like science on Minmus and plant flag on Minmus, which would be a good combo. So we'll see what we can do there. But next mission will indeed be launching some satellites. And we finally get to play with some of the newer 1.2 features. Although we did play with that new science capsule, which is really nice. Thanks for watching. See you next time.